Um, so, one thing I want to talk about, speaking of relationships and my relationships, there, I've had a few conversations recently with some friends of mine that are in long-term relationships, and these, the ones that I'm thinking of are, are, are married friends. And as I was listening to some struggles that they were having, and as I was noticing some things that are going really well in my relationship, there was, there's something, an element that I recognize is critical to making a relationship work. This is coming from someone who's never had a long-term relationship, but at least to make it work for, his, for when it does work for me. And that is, you cannot keep score. The relationship, the partnership of a relationship can't be one where these are your duties, these are my duties, you know, oh, you didn't do your duties. And, you know, I did this much more than you. Once you fall into that trap, it is so hard to get out. Because for a relationship to be a plus boost boost on both sides, everything you do for the relationship has to be a gift. And has it been long enough for me talking about uh, gifting to, rep to, to, to clarify that? Let me just clarify what that means. A gift means there's no expectation. A gift is you give and then let go. You can't give a gift and expect something back that is not a gift. That's a transaction and that's a, a, a negotiation. So, but if you do things from a gift perspective, then you can feel good about giving it no matter what they do in advance. And if things are in a nice balance, they will be appreciative and then you feel good about it. If you're in a scorekeeping or transactional type partnership, that same act that was a gift that you felt good for doing and they appreciated made you feel even better is suddenly baseline. And suddenly there's no joy in it. It is simply the, the best case scenario is that you don't get in trouble for not doing it. Ooh, man, that is the exact same amount of effort infinitely less joy and appreciation and pleasure from the situation. And so, and then once you get caught in that and you start to keep score and you start to notice, it becomes very, very hard to go back into a, I'm just doing this because I want to help you. Oh, I know that, I know you said that you were going to do that. Or you were going to wash the dishes every day because I'm doing this, but yeah, I want to help you today. I want to do the dishes. I just, I just want to. Um, it is a. Uh, it is one of those examples of how the mindset of the action determines infinitely how it is felt and perceived. It's the same action, but when it's done from a place of gifting, it's different. Now, there's a few things about gifting that that are in, like interesting. Where, like, it's. It's important to watch yourself as you gift and, and ask, are you gifting or are you making deals? You know, like if you give someone a book and you keep asking them, do they like it? Do they like it? Did they like it? That's not a gift. That's an assignment. You know, if you are giving of yourself in a relationship and then when that person then leaves you and you're like, oh, I was expecting something back. Well, then you weren't gifting all along. You were you know, making this transaction without telling them about it. Kaki says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. And that comes from a very famous book. That is a, what, is that a Corinthians, I think? That's from probably the most popular passage to be read at weddings. It is a, a beautiful sentiment. Corinthians 13, look at that! Look at the old biblical brain on Bob! Um, so yeah, that's, there's, you know, that's, that's a, look at there, that's a perfect example of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So many people are so peeved by what churches have done in the name of Christianity that people are not open to this amazing wisdom and teachings that are available via Christianity. And I get that. I've certainly had my periods of, of anti-Christian anger. 
Um, but look at that. Uh, good stuff. Papa was a preacher. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know. I, I, I have a hard time claiming that, uh, being a preacher or, uh, but I don't know. I don't know what else I could be. Not like an inspirational speaker, really, which is what I was kind of trying to say, but not really. Kind of a guy with a webcam. <sighs> guy with webcam speaking to technology. Redefine the title. Um, yeah, and I think and it's interesting because there's Krista was saying redefine the title, and it's the the definitions within religious organizations in our culture are so covered in history that it's very hard to, to reclaim them. One of the reasons that I think New Age thinkers in, in, in America and so gravitate to Eastern philosophy is because Christ is so covered in the bad memories and stuff and bad, you know, judgments of things that have done in his name. You know, whereas you could read things by Bishop Spong, who's a modern theologian who 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 interprets the the words of Christ in a very new age awesome way. Um but I get it, you know, it's 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 hard to my my grandpa himself, you know, he, by the end of his life, he rarely called himself a Christian. He called himself a Jesus man because he didn't want to by saying he was Christian also imply that he was, you know, a part of these institutions that he felt had kind of missed the mark in a lot of ways. Gifter and hugger. I'll take that. That'll be my title. Um, Carousel says, I think there needs to be a seminary for people who lead but aren't preaching a religious method. The belief buffet. Um, but seminary, I think that's an interesting idea, you know, as like, because we have this, we're in this interesting pocket now of time where there's this massive amount of people that are turned off by organized religion. We think it's for people who are gullible and whatever. And yet, atheism is, doesn't feel right. I mean, I clearly, I believe in God. I believe in, 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 a, in love. I believe in something way beyond the human physical science experience. And so, and I think a lot of people are in that boat. But where do you go with that? You know, it, there's a, not a lot of disciplines. There's not a lot of places. I mean, I'm actually discovering more and more. The Agape Church, this church I went to last week, um, Jacob Glass that I go see, there's other, the Course in Miracles study groups. So there are these places, but it's, it's almost like it feels very underground considering how many people I know that I think resonate with that. <sighs> um... Who interprets Christ? The guy's name is Bishop Spong, S-P-O-N-G. Uh, you can search him online. He's genius. Awesome. My mom introduced me to him. My mom is a, a very into the historical Jesus and uh, goes to seminars about um, kind of reinterpreting uh, Jesus based on, you know, the, the lost texts and, and all sorts of stuff. It's very cool. Agape is amazing if you can do it. Hugologist, hugger of souls. It's true. There's a theme song. I can't argue with that. Um, Pizza Mancer says, Sadly, it seems that the most religious people have not read the Bible any further than a few passages here and there. Well, I mean, this is a big question, a big issue, which is the difference between, you know, being religious and being spiritual. I mean, for many people, religion is... A alignment with a home team you know it is it, it is is a, is a feeling of belonging it is isn't being part of the in-group and so you in the same way the same kind of mentality that makes you hate you know uh, somebody from another country you know goddamn insert the blank it's that feeling that they suck we rule when you are raised within certain you know churches um, the, it's the same kind of feeling of we're, we we rule you suck, and and it has nothing to do with the teachings or 
I mean, the thing about a, a, a huge book that's been interpreted and translated many, many times and overseen by people with all sorts of agendas is that you can take, you can find things to justify almost anything, especially if you take it out of context. You want to prove that, you know, being gay is an abomination, you can find that. You want to prove, you know, that being wealthy is, is being, is, is, a, is, is good, you can find that. Want to be found that wealthy is, is keeping you from heaven, you can find that. You want to find that crustaceans are a bad idea, you can find that. You want to find something that says cut the end of your penis off, you can find that. So, it goes back to the uh, Joseph Campbell idea that any religious texts, ideas, teachings need to be metaphorical. They have to be for it to be working. Because, this is my, uh, I, I'm not a scholar of his, this is my understanding, every human being's experience is vastly different. And so, a, 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 to take any words as absolute, they will not fit absolutely with any one individual. So you have to have it as a metaphor, shape it to your experience, and use it as a guide. Which works for many, many people. Let's see, I missed some things, okay. Um, Chardonnay says, usually it's not the message, but how it is delivered. Um, well, here's, okay, here's the thing. We are communicating as we speak with words. Words are gross attempts to take ideas and make them into symbols so we can communicate. The minute you take an idea and formulate it into words, it's an abstraction. So then that abstraction is heard by you, you filter through your experiences, you take that and try to interpret that into ideas. The chance of us being exactly in the same wavelength is zero. And so even the most profound religious ideas is really partially the idea and partially your filtering of it. Gandhi wrote a book called All Religions Are True. And that is, it was, it was the one thing that I, I asked for my grandpa. Uh, and in the book, Gandhi says, all religions are true. Every religion is true an accurate path of truth for somebody, but not for you. And so you can never understand someone else's faith and someone else's path. The best you can do is appreciate them and honor that that, is, that works for them. So arguing about faith, arguing about belief is a crazy, it's, it, it's, it's ridiculous. You know, the idea of, of, uh, uh, the Buddhist idea that Buddhism is a finger pointing at the moon. All faith, all religion, all everything, even everything we're talking about today, belief buffet, these ideas, all of these things are fingers that are pointing to a moon. They're symbols, they're maps, they're saying, look, there is something unspeakable, unknowable, but <sighs> this divine thing, this peace, this love, this something, this divinity. And the tragedy is that that is a huge concept to understand. And so most people start to just study and worship the finger. And Buddhism says, don't mistake the finger for the moon. Very important. When, you, when people cite the Bible, they're mistaking the finger for the moon. The, the Bible is a finger. I won't tell you which finger. <laughs> Isn't that good? Don't mistake the finger for the moon. And the way that I also, I, I, I kind of push that, that metaphor a little bit further, which is that I believe that we all have like an iron filing inside us of, of divine mass. And 
when outside of any in total quiet and silence we feel the gravity of that mass to the moon and without with with total silence and 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 quietness we can actually feel the pull towards that moon now we get so caught up in the world that it gets the fingers are all over the place and it's very hard to quiet them enough so you actually feel it but the more you get in touch with it, the more to put people you're around that are in touch with that the more you come aware oh there is there is there is a, a there is a directional flow in this direction that is beyond words it is a truth it is just a part of the flow of the universe and it is a part of me now to get to that awareness it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of stripping away of fingers and words so you can use the fingers and hopefully it eventually feel that pull. <laughs> Some people stick their finger in your eye, making it harder to see the moon, says Krista Richards. Yes! Uh, Alan Watts says that in, in our culture, many people not only listen to the finger, but they've actually, they're sucking on it. But the moon is real. The moon is unknowable, but beautiful and uh, it is not it is it is not something you get to with struggle or logic it is something that you get to by listening to the pull and trying to kind of blur your eyes and figure out which way the fingers pointing and feel the pull trying to avoid the fingers in your eye <laughs>